Oh, good morning, everybody. We're going to give it another minute here before we start. People still joining. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, a little after 11, I want to thank everybody for joining. This is one of our last lunch and learns uh, for the summer, and it's an important one, hurricane season. Uh, we're going to learn a lot today about what the projections are and what to do. So uh, I could just welcome everybody. We're going to start with a little reminder about Hurricane Ian back in September 2022, what that uh, caused and uh, just going to play a quick video just to get everybody's attention on to uh, make sure we're all listening and preparing for this season. That just reminds us of what Mother Nature can do. It was one of the most, the third costly hurricane. It was about 115 billion insured and uninsured damages. A lot of it was from storm surge and a lot of deaths. A lot of people didn't take the, the warning and they stayed. And, and really, we, it was a really, really bad uh, hurricane, as we know. Um, my name's Rob Cornerens. I started in the roofing business in Long Island uh, when I was 16 years old. I worked through high school and college, and my boss had me open a branch in Atlanta, Georgia, right out of the University of Arizona in 79. Moved me here in 82 to take over an existing branch. Left him in uh, 83, uh, borrowed 15 grand from my dad, bought a pickup truck, and we started advanced roofing right here in South Florida, and Fort Lauderdale. Same phone number for 41 years. Proud of that. Uh, in 1994, we bought a little company, started in the HVAC business. In 2005, we got into the solar business. And uh, today, we're uh, the largest commercial re-roofing in the state, as well as solar. And our air conditioning is uh, one of the top leading. Uh, we do run it with my two boys. You can see them down there, twins, uh, Kevin and Mike, they're both on the call as well as a great executive team and great team members throughout our seven branches. And you're going to hear from a couple of them today. 
So um, what what makes us different is basically, you know, 40 years in business uh, is uh, very few companies make it to that in in the United States or anywhere in the world, less than 1% plus uh, the size of 750 employees. We uh, we pride ourselves, every job uh, we consider award winning, so we apply for that. Do a lot in the community, uh, Heart Walk, MS, Bike Ride, Boys and Girls. We have about 200 you know, charities we donate. We actually go out and help uh, build um, at Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we, we took care of one of our employees, unfortunately had a fatality and we painted their house and we got an award for that. So we really give back to the community and that's a big part of our culture. Uh, we have all the in-house in divisions, HVAC, cranes, sheet metal, electric, and uh, nationally recognized. So um, talked about the uh, number of employees and the fact that we live and breathe. We have solar roofs, we have solar carports and electric vehicles and charging stations. So we're always uh, ahead of the game as far as what we do and and keep uh, continuous improvement as a core value. Our offices are available statewide. Fort Lauderdale's our home, and then we have Sanford, Orlando, and Tampa as our big. Uh, production and service. Jupiter is uh, also small scope work service. Jacksonville, Fort Myers, and Miami Dade. We all uh, have scope work, small scope work, and services. We have over 75 trucks around the state, and we're proud of that. We're able to respond to hurricanes quickly, uh, pull resources from other parts of the states, as well as Roof Connect. I started Roof Connect over 20 years ago. It's a national organization of independent roofing contractors. We, we, didn't, we did not sell, like there's a lot of consolidation in this industry, and I'm not sure that's going to be a good thing, but it's it's real. But we are you know private, and Roof Connect is all privately held companies, so we're able to draw over 6,000 employees if a real bad one comes, and we don't have the resources. But we own our own cranes, roll off, so we're pretty self-sufficient as far as that goes. So uh, make sure you stick around. We're going to have a drawing at the end for AirTag. These are great to put in your luggage or put it on your kid. You won't lose them. So uh, stick around, and we'll have a raffle at the end. The learning objectives uh, for today is really the historical uh, facts, predictions, uh, and how, how to prepare for hurricanes. That's uh, really important, what you can do. Advanced access uh, portal, that's our um, software program that we use to manage roof assets. So you were able to uh, upload all your roofs, make recommended actions. So you have a portal, you can dispatch service trucks from there. So we're going to go away, uh, go over that as well. And then there'll be key takeaways and we'll leave time for questions and answers. Um, Got to show a little video of Hurricane Andrew 1992. Very tight hurricane, uh, you know, but for a lot of damage. It was one of the first ones that really came about. Let's go. We I think we have a video on this. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, right after it, I, I was in a helicopter. I flew. I always try to get up uh, as fast as I can to assess any damages, especially for our existing clients. Uh, we map out our existing clients fly over. We, we know before they know how much damage they have. But this was pretty detrimental. Homestead Shopping Center. There's the Sears. We had just completed that. We're proud of that. We actually took a full page ad out of it uh, in the Miami Herald to toot our own horn. But uh, that Sears stayed on and everybody else, as you can see, the damage that was caused by that hurricane. A um, little bit of, you know, it was well designed and it was a concrete deck, so it gave us a little more strength. So, yeah, but we're proud of that, that uh, our roof stayed on. And the projections. Uh, so here you can see we're looking at above normal for the NOAA, uh, 14 name storms, uh, seven hurricanes, and three major. And I think this is even getting upgraded further um, as we uh, get into the season. So um, we'll have to see. But uh, they say that the U.S. could be a, a more in the, the cone than ever before. So let's pay attention and uh, prepare and uh, make sure everybody's safe. And another thing that uh, really important is the speed of the storms. Pay attention to the speed. Slow storm, slow moving storms can do more damage at a load of category than a fast moving. Andrew was very quick and it went through, but there was a lot of damage with really strong winds. I've seen Hurricane K 
category two and three do more damage than a four or five because they hang out. Look at Doreen, it just hung out over there and just really beat it up. To give you an idea how roofs get rated by Dade County and the Florida Building Code, they go down and they get tested on a 12 by 24 uh, uh, platform and they put their roof on that. And then over that, there's a big dome, almost looks like a skylight. So 12 by 24, car and a half, you build the roof, they put the dome, they use these large vacuums that suck the pressure out of that vacuum. So for every uh, 15 PSI, they hold for one minute. So they get it up to the highest pressure, and then it, when it pops, that's how they rate it. So say it gets up to, uh, you know, uh, 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 say 90, the, the safety factor too, so it's a 45 PSI, and that's, you know, 60 PSI is Dade County, and that's approximately 180 mile an hour. There's other factors that go into that, but that's an important factor, and when, when you talk about only holding something for one minute in a laboratory versus holding a storm over a building for hours and hours, you can imagine the pressure just, you know, continually being on that. So you got to watch the, uh, you know, slow moving storms are as dangerous, uh, quick moving, you know, wind speed is a factor as well, but it's all depending on, on the, on how long it stays over your building. Uh, here's a little uh, wall of wind. Uh, this is a little better test. They came up with uh, down at FIU 12 uh, airplane engines. And uh, so rather than just doing a, a you know, one minute hold, they actually can blow on it for as long as they want. So uh, let's play that video. Category five hurricane is a monster of a storm. These 12 giant fans can create the intensity of a cat five hurricane with 157 mile an hour winds, pummeling roof tiles and solar panels. When we have 12 of them running together at the full speed, we have 8,400 horsepower. Civil engineer Arindam Chaudhary and his team at Florida International University and the International Hurricane Research Center designed this 15-foot tall wall of wind, nicknamed WOW. I'm gonna go up now to 60 miles an hour. The goal is to see if low-rise structures and building materials can withstand the same wind forces they face in a full-blown hurricane. We did testing on rooftop equipment and we looked at the loads and based on the results, we sent recommendations to the Florida Building Code, and those recommendations are now in the Florida Building Code. Manufacturers work with Chotary to test the durability of new products. For example, they want to see if this solar panel will stand up to hurricane force winds. Sensors measure the pressure on the panel as the wind starts to blow. We want to make sure everything stays within the frame, that the whole unit stays on the racking itself. What wind speed? It's about 120. And we flip it around though. A rotating turntable exposes all sides to headwinds. Now we can see effects from different angles of the wind and get the data for all the directions. I don't think we're going to see any damage to the panel based on what I saw. It's great. It's, you couldn't get this in any other type of test. So that was, uh, you know, interesting that really uh, the advancement in testing and and uh, that's good, uh, Tatiana. So um, yeah, the wall wind, if anybody wants to do a tour, we can get you down there. We've had uh, actually a lunch and learn live before the pandemic down there. It's a great place to visit. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Jason Carruth. He's a third generation uh, grandfather, father, both in the roofing business in South Florida. He's been with us for close to 16 years. He started just as a service estimator in South Florida and then a service estimator in Orlando Sanford branch and then became branch manager. And we're proud to say that Jason uh, landed one of the largest contracts of uh, advanced roofing's history. It's $25 million Orange County Convention Center that includes roofing, HVAC, and solar. So we have all three of our divisions working um, uh, 24 hours, uh, 24 hours up there. So um, what, welcome, Jason, and take it over. Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, my name is Jason. I uh, run the Central Florida branch uh, for advanced roofing. Um, my purpose of what I'm going to try to explain to you guys is the types of roof systems that perform well under hurricanes and, and high winds and give you a little bit of history a, about that. And then I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about what to do before and after a storm. 
so the the previous slide and the previous video uh, talked about the Florida Building Code and basically doing testing. So every roofing manufacturer that uh, is in the state of, that is applied in the state of Florida spends countless hours and a lot of money on testing their roof systems to make sure that they meet the wind loads. The state of Florida has five different wind loads being the highest in South Florida, which they call the high hurricane velocity zone, makes up three counties. And then as you go up the state, the wind speeds uh, decrease all the way up through the, the panhandle. Um, so every one of these roof manufacturers test their system off of different um, deck types, whether it's a metal deck, a wood deck, a concrete deck, lightweight concrete, or gypsum. Um, and some of the highest performing ones are these here on this, this slide here. I'm talking a little bit about Rhino Bond roof attachments. This is 100% uh, primarily for single ply roof systems. Um, Rhino Bond is a technology, I'm gonna say it's probably about 12, 15 years old now, uh, that came out that basically it's heat weld inducting the membrane in full sheets to the insulation or to the uh, 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 to the metal deck with a cover board. So um, some of the benefits uh, of the Rhino Bond roof system is that you have a, a stronger uplift pressure uh, uh, at a higher at a higher rate spread out throughout the uh, the, the course of the of the membrane. Um, you can utilize wider sheets, um, meaning that the TPO rolls come in. Five foot, four foot, ten foot, twelve foot, and now some manufacturers are making sixteen foot wide sheets. Um, when they have less uh, seams, you have less of a uh, potential of having a leak or an opening in the seam. So you can utilize wider sheets when you're utilizing Rhino Bond, um, which is uh, you know one of the benefits for that for that type of system as well. Uh, foam adhesives. Foam adhesives are um, for insulation, primarily used on uh, concrete decks or non-combustible decks with like lightweight concrete. Um, some of the highest uplift pressures, uh, meaning the, the roof will hold down or, or bond to the, the substrate uh, at, at higher pressures, like we were talking about pulling against it. Um, foam adhesives have a, some of the highest uh, uplift pressures in out of all the manuf of, of, that manufacturers use for all the deck types. Um, they can utilize that on insulation. You can also utilize foam adhesives for membranes directly to uh, substrates where we're putting the adhesive on the back of single ply membranes uh, right directly to, uh, to uh, insulation or directly to lightweight concrete decks or, or whatever. Uh, modified uh, roof systems are primarily a multi-ply asphaltic a uh, roof system that gets put down either in hot asphalt or it could be torch applied or it could be put down in, in a cold adhesive. Um, they're all asphalt based, uh, very durable uh, for wind traffic, uh, multi plies, uh, different than a single ply. If you have a cut in a single ply membrane, you primarily have a leak at that primary area there. If you have a cut in the top layer of a modified, you have a secondary uh, barrier typically underneath that allows uh, to keep the roof system waterproofed. Um, a PMMA is a, um, a two-part resin. It's a chemical component of a liquid applied roof system. Um, very durable, uh, what we call monolithic, which basically means there's no seams. It's all, once you, this gets rolled out from uh, end to end on a roof system, there are no laps, there's no seams. Um, it is a, uh, what they call a two-part resin. You take a part A and a part B, it has a cure time when you put it together and you typically roll it across the roof, sometimes into a polyester fabric, sometimes directly into the, uh, uh, the components itself. Um, very high performing roof systems here, all different types um, for low slope flat roofing. Next slide. Uh, some of the components that, were, that go into these roof systems are the, uh, over here on the top left is the gypsum cover boards. Um, on top of those installations, on top of those uh, mechanically attached systems, a gypsum cover board provides a durability, comes in a quarter inch, half inch, five eighths. Um, these are the three different types, the Densdex, Secure Rock, and Soper board. There also is a product called Dexel. 
um, that uh, basically like your sheetrock. It provides durability, a flat, nice, clean substrate to lay down over your roof deck. Um, it's a compressed cementous board that has a uh, uh, very good with hail, not necessarily in Florida a whole lot, but up in the northern sections, we do deal with hail every once in a while. Um, so it, it's a good substrate to put down to have a nice uniform flat uh, surface in order to install your new roof on. Uh, one of the biggest things when you're re-roofing buildings is enhancing the existing structure. Uh, as a roofing contractor, we tear off old roofs, you expose the metal deck, the wood deck. We always want to make sure that those components are, are uh, mechanically attached to the substrate uh, per the Florida Building Code, renailing plywood decks, um, making sure that the uh, metal decks are attached to the, uh, to the purlins or the joists. Uh, the uh, roof system is only as good, uh, good as, as attached as the deck is to the, to the joist system. So um, a lot of uh, roof systems fail and plywood decking comes off with the roof system. That's because the plywood is not attached to the substrate or to the trusses according to current codes. Um, we mentioned a little bit about the foam adhesives and the rhino bonds. Uh, some of the membranes, these KEE is a... Uh, Ketone ethylene ester, which is basically a, uh, a high durable polymer that gets added into single ply membranes in order to give it more durability, more flexibility. Um, it is a, a higher end product than your regular TPOs or your PVCs. Um, it, it's kind of like adding a little bit of a steroid to your uh, to your single ply membranes, if you will. Uh, PVC membranes, piney vinyl chloride, same as a PVC pipe. Uh, basically a, a liquid polyvinyl chloride that gets laid up into a, a, a polyester mat that's woven. Um, very good with uh, chemicals, roof systems that have chemicals up on top uh, or uh, high traffic as well. Um, modified systems and PMMAs we spoke a little bit about. Hurricane's coming, right? What do I do? Here, uh, you know, we always look at the cone. Everybody looks at the cone, not really paying much attention when it's seven to 10 days out. But as it gets closer, you know, making sure that your roof is in a certain condition to where it will be able to perform. Rob mentioned earlier about slow moving storms. They dump a ton of rain. If a storm is moving anywhere between six to eight to 10 miles an hour, that is more detrimental to a roof surf system than a storm that's going 18, 15, 18 miles an hour coming across. You're not going to have a whole lot of rain. When you're dumping a lot of rain, these are the areas that you want to uh, uh, focus on. You want to make sure that all your drainage, whether it's your internal roof drains, your gutter systems, your downspout systems are all clean, free of debris. That way, when we do have these uh, torrential downpours over a long period of time, sometimes two, three days, that your roof system can get the water off. What happens is, is if you have debris that's up there and your water, the rain can't get off of the roof, that's when you start having problems with uh, water finding a way to open laps, uh, penetrations, um, and then th that's what causes leaks. So some of these areas here are, are the main focus areas. Um, wall flashings are another one. Um, basically making sure that your laps on your wall flashings are, are tight and you know, having a periodic maintenance program on your roof system um, is really the best way to go. You don't want to be reactive and wait for a storm and then, you know, a couple of days before have to scramble to have somebody come up there and fix all these things. So having a periodic roof, uh, maintenance program yearly, um, this is what we do. And we're just making sure that the roof system is performing. Uh, this slide right here is talking a little bit about more of what to do, not necessarily on the roof, but you know, from a paperwork standpoint. All the documentation that you guys have for any of your properties or your, your buildings is, is best. Uh, digitally, um, we talked in the beginning about advanced access and it being advanced roofing software pro, uh, that we utilize to document every customer's information in regards to warranties, uh, permits, uh, photo documentation, service history, 
Um, having all that information and in, in doing a, uh, a, a roof inspection is critical when you're having to deal with your insurance company, making sure you, your, your insurance is current, understanding what your hurricane deductibles are. Uh, every insurance company in the state of Florida has a, a hurricane deductible. As soon as the, there is a named storm and it apply, and it, you know, the, your hurricane deductible is, becomes enforced if you do file a claim. Um, that's a, typically anywhere between two and three percent of your value. So that uh, becomes a little bit of a different aspect when when a named storm comes across. But knowing where that insurance uh, policy is, where it stands, and what your hurricane deductible is, um, documenting, walking the roof, taking pictures. We can actually go to the next slide. I'll get a little bit into that. Um, so hurricanes coming. What do I do? Um, getting a uh, qualified contractor up on the roof or even walking around on the roof yourself and taking some pictures and documenting of what condition that the roof system is in. Um, not only that, but trees, gutters, uh, what does it look like before the storm comes and what is it going to look like afterwards? And then that way it's kind of a, uh, a, a clear model to uh, the insurance company if you are going to file a claim. Um, understanding that your drains are clean, understanding that the panels on the side of your HVAC units are, are secure, um, walking the roof, just documenting everything, the current condition of, of, of where it is now. Very critical, keeping those files in case you have any, any damage you can fall back on. And here's a critical one. This is, uh, you know, storms passed, sun comes out. What happened to my building? I've been riding it out on the inside. Everybody's, you know, gone through this phase. What, what happened? You hear things outside. Can be very dangerous. Be cautious walking around. When you get outside, I, you know, we hear a lot of stories of down power lines and puddles and people walking. It can be a dangerous scenario, um, especially if your building loses power and you're out of power. You don't know if there's a power line down. You don't know if it's pulled from your building. Um, just being very cautious, uh, taking photos of the damage of what is occurring now, um, contacting your insurance company is critical and having your policy on hand. If it's a lot of mass destruction, you guys know that some of these things can take a long time to, uh, to get an adjuster out there, look at the claims, and go from there. Advanced Roofing does assist and help you with documentation, um, calling us out to look at the something, a qualified contractor uh, to get up there. You know, I say this, Channel 7 in South Florida says this, everybody says this, don't hire an unlicensed contractor. Do not give any cash or the cash deposits to any contractor. Should not be the case. Um, hire somebody that's qualified. So. Um, Advanced Roofing's two cents on what to do before and after. Um, I'm going to hand this one over to Paul. Paul uh, is our HVAC manager in South Florida, and he's going to help you understand what to do with your mechanical equipment before and after as well. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to go over the uh, pre-inspection and post-inspection for HVAC. Uh, we'll start with the pre-inspection. Uh, pretty much everything you guys want to make sure is checked off before that hurricane comes in and uh, hopefully it doesn't cause any damage to you, but we want to try to make sure that we prevent any damage as much as possible. Um, so one of the things you want to check out is uh, make sure we check out all the fasteners, make sure they're tight and that they're, uh, you know, the, the panels are all secure. So make sure that the high winds don't blow off the panels because a lot of the damages we see from uh, hurricanes with HVAC units is that the panels will come off and damage the roof, also damage other HVAC equipment. So make sure the fasteners are good, make sure the panels are secure, replacing any rusted components, whether the rusted components are fasteners or tie down clips or even the equipment themselves. Some equipment has been rusted to a point to where it can't be fastened. So we wanna make sure that maybe addressing that equipment before it causes failure to other units or the roof system or any other system that is close by, even solar panels as well. Um, so checking down the, the tie down clips, the cables, however your system is, or however your equipment is attached, just making sure that it is properly attached. 
because sometimes uh, they can be removed for service and not be put back. So making sure that is taken care of. Also, always recommend uh, getting either current conditions report from your, uh, your HVAC contractor or at least going up yourself and taking the photos of what the equipment looked prior to the hurricane so that we have documentation. Um, and also, if you so there are some AC units that don't have proper hail guards or just guards around the coils for protection, so you may want to figure out wrapping that with some protective plastic or, or something so that way the coils don't get destroyed by debris. So um, then moving to the post hurricane inspection slide. First thing I want to say is safety first, uh, you know, after hurricanes, there could be a lot of water, standing water, and we don't want to, you know, go check out equipment that is in standing or puddling water because it could be caused the ground. You could be the ground in that situation and, and get electrocuted. So we want to try to make sure all ponding water and all debris is removed before go ahead and uh, inspect those units. And I also recommend that you just have an HVAC contractor do the inspection for you because they can go through the entire equipment and, and catch anything that you could possibly miss just with a visual inspection. But if you are going to do that inspection yourself, I do recommend that you get the electrical um, disconnect turned off. So make sure that you don't have any issues with any electrical hazards. So making sure that you turn it off at the breaker, make sure all power is disconnected before you go out and look at the unit. Then you can remove any debris that's around the unit. You can assess for damages, take some pictures and compare from pre pre hurricane pictures to post hurricane and then provide your documentation to your insurance claims. Like I said, we're more than happy to provide those inspection reports for you. So if you have any, uh, if you ever want us to come out and do a post inspection or pre inspection, please reach out to us. And I'm going to hand it off to Clint to do the solar uh, pre and post. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, everybody. I'm Clint Sockman, Executive Vice President here at Advanced Roofing and Advanced Green Technologies and uh, run day-to-day -day operations of our solar division. And we're going to talk quickly, uh, similar to Paul, about pre and post hurricane inspections of solar assets and uh, what best to do. Uh, Pre-inspection, and I think we've heard a lot of messaging here about how we spend a lot of time, effort, and money to engineer our systems, whether they're roof systems, HVAC systems, or solar systems, to withstand these enormous wind events that we have. And really, the biggest thing that we can do uh, pre-hurricane inspection is establish that they're still in that condition that they were engineered to. Um, for solar specifically, going up and getting eyes on our inverters and the statuses that they're communicating and able to be operating uh, remotely because these uh, inverters do have the ability to communicate through the internet. We can shut them down. We can check to see if they're producing uh, or if they've had any major faults happen. Inspecting our inverter enclosures and our electrical gear enclosures to make sure that the cabinets and the door hinges are able to be locked. Uh, that they're properly sealed against water intrusion. The majority of the electronics and the um, the electrical gear that we put on our rooftops or on our buildings for solar are either NEMA 3R or NEMA 4X rated. That means they're watertight, they're uh, potentially corrosion resistant. They're made to weather these types of storms, but only if they're properly closed, they're, uh, you know, all of their um, bolts are properly seated and the, the cabinets are able to be locked. And we see a lot of this, and this is really good general electrical infrastructure inspection to do as well. Uh, one of the largest things with solar assets we have sometimes up to a million bolts, literally on some of our larger solar arrays. And each one of those bolted connections is torqued to a very specific setting. And then we mark them with a paint stripe to ensure that we know, you know, that, that we're able to have a reference point to look back and say, this is still torqued properly. But getting an eye and making sure that we're looking at our torque marks, that nothing's become loose, that we don't have loose electrical connections or structural connections that could lead to a premature failure from the loads that are put on these assets underneath these high wind events. Uh, an enormous amount of vibration at 150 or 180 miles an hour uh, can stress these connections over time and cause them to loosen up. And sometimes these systems are, you know, designed to bend but not break. And, you know, if we put them through too many cycles uh, through either heating and cooling or extreme wind and vibration, uh, these things tend to loosen up. So we want to get a good reference point and make sure that all of our torque settings are still solid. Looking at all of our conduits, 
uh, couplings and fittings, duct seals to make sure that everything is in place uh, for a watertight roof system. We talked a lot about the winds. One thing that comes along with wind is wind driven rain and the ability for rain to travel uphill into places that it might not in a normal rain event uh, while we're driving the rain with uh, extreme wind. Inspecting visible correct uh, uh, wire connections to make sure they're par properly terminated. Uh, we use stainless steel wire ties, but some contractors might use traditional uh, black wire ties that do become brittle and loose over time and wiring falls down. But uh, making sure that everything's ensure, ensured that it's you know uh, in, in good health is certainly something that we want to do. We talked about spot checking all of our attachments on our structure, looking for our torque verifications, inspect and document the condition of our PV modules. And this is something that is important to be done pre-installation. In case there ever is an insurance issue, that documenting conditions before the storm and having a good reference that you've been doing maintenance, that you've been taking care of it, that it was in the condition that it was designed to be in, is one of the most important things that we can do for any of these assets. Um, we also now offer drone services, so we can do aerial surveys with our uh, infrared cameras as well to get uh, the condition at more of a, a technical level to see if there's any hot spots on the arrays, broken modules that you might not see just with your uh, naked eye. And then inspecting our warning signs and labels for our first responders. The NEC is a very well developed and established code. Uh, solar installations follow. We have warning signs, we have placards that show where there could be energized uh, conductors in the event that the utility is still out, where to find the disconnect systems and the switches. And we want to make sure that all of those things are intact. And one of the most important things, obviously, if you are in the direct path of a storm, we do recommend that you cycle the systems off that we pull our disconnects out um, and, and lock everything out, lock out, tag out, and take your system out of, uh, uh, out of commission for that uh, pre-hurricane time when uh, a, a landfall or a direct strike is imminent. Moving on to post-installation. Uh, the first thing to do is obviously come back out and have an AGT technician or another qualified solar technician walk the asset, uh, get a visual inspection, and then ultimately power back the system back on to identify if we have any issues. Uh, and we're kind of you know going to go in reverse and and look for water leakage in any of the components and any of the uh, gear cabinets or inverter cabinets. Take uh, operating voltages of all of our DC and AC strings and currents to make sure that we don't have any nicked wires or ground faults uh, that are out there. Getting back and looking at our torque marks, again, these vibration events that happen. Um, we've had uh, one of our carports for Dr. Mercola, who's a, a large uh, homeopathic medicine guy in Fort Myers, took a direct hit from Hurricane Ian, sustained 150 mile an hour winds on a carport. And we didn't lose a single solar panel. Uh, there's nearly a thousand solar panels on the array. Uh, but when we did get in there, we had a lot of bolts that had come loose. You know, it, it bent and not broke. But uh, we took the punch, and you know, everything just gets retorqued back in place. We mark it, make sure it's good, and put it back. Uh, inspecting those conduits and terminations, couplings, fittings, duct seals, kind of going through the reverse. But then uh, again, you can do that thermal scan both pre and post installation to see if there is damage that you can't see. Uh, uh, you know, wind-driven uh, debris, whether that's uh, environmental debris from I've seen trees and coconuts, or I've certainly seen uh, HVAC, you know, condensing units tumbling across the roofs uh, can damage your panels and cause hot spots. And you know, you would you would want to get that fixed, um, and then a full visual inspection and documentation of your conditions again. Obviously, removing any debris and uh, anything that could be causing shade or loss of energy production as well. With that, I am going to turn it over to Michael Cornarens, Managing Partner, Executive Vice President over here at uh, AGT to talk a little bit about warranties, insurance coverages. Uh, Michael, it's all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. So Clint said, Managing Partner at the roofing side and solar side, and look forward to speaking with you all today. All right, next slide. <clears throat> We're talking a little bit about warranties. Uh, I have a joke in our business, the water runs in, the warranty runs out, but, uh, but today we're gonna talk about manufacturer warranties. There's several different types. Um, there's manufacturer no dollar limit warranties. And what does that mean? That means that the manufacturer is gonna stand behind the warranty for the, you know, the time frame of the warranty has been issued for. Typical that we see on a day-to-day -day basis is around is 20 years. Um, sometimes you'll see the manufacturers go 30 years, 
um, but that's very rare and that's a very robust system. Um, and what does that mean? That means that the, if there, you do have an active leak in the, the roofing system, that they will pay to fix it. There's no pr prorating and, and they'll make sure that your roof is watertight. Um, manufacturer warranties and material warranties is just saying that the product's not going to fail. It's really not worth the paper that's written on. Most of the products out here these days, we don't see any product failures. Usually it's issues with insulation. Um, you know, it, it's not really, you're not really getting anything. Um, and then the other one that was out for a while is manufacturers, labor and materials. You know, that you have to look at those warranties and really understand what you're buying there. Um, a lot of times they'll cap um, the labor or cap the material or, you know, there's, there's a lot of stipulations. <clears throat> Um, on that side, most of those are usually 10 or 15 year warranties that are on a, on a, you know, not as, I said, not as good as the system, roofing systems, systems that are, are subpar in my opinion. A uh, contractor warranties, uh, standard is two years to five years, uh, depending on what the scope of work is and the type of roofing system going down. That is very important. Um, you're going to know within the first couple of years if your roof system is good or not after installation. Um, I can tell you Sometimes it takes a little troubleshooting. You got an issue on a wall or something that it does take a couple of shots to get it right. Um, there's things you're not seeing, especially on the condo market. Uh, there's a lot of attributes up on that roof that are outside of the roofing system that leak. Um, you know, we fight it all the time when we're, we're, we're out there playing detective and, you know, there's a stand on a chiller that's leaking into the roofing system. We're trying to figure out if the roof's leaking or is it the stand or is it the walls? So, on the warranty side, I tell you to read the warranties, understand them. A lot of the warranties require inspections. Um, but I doesn't have to be by the contractor that installed it. Uh, most of the times, it needs to be by a contractor that is certified by the roofing manufacturer. So understand that. Um, as far as hurricane goes and warranties, most of the warranties will exclude high wind events over 55 miles an hour. Um, there are warranties out there with the NDL side of things that will cover you up to 130 miles an hour. One piece of information and trick that I'll tell you, F, if you are in an impacted area and you were, we put your roof on and it's in good condition, put on your calendar in six months when everything calms down to get the manufacturer back out there and inspect the roof. So they have no reason down the road in five years if you do have an issue to cancel your warranty or say, oh, you were in the middle of a hurricane and you didn't do this. They'll inspect it. They might give you a couple items to bring up to par, but that'll ensure that your warranty is still in effect. Next slide. Selecting the right coverage. I was actually on a conference call earlier this week. Um, you know, just making sure that you're not underinsured. Uh, that was a big problem down in Fort Myers in the Southwest Florida this, uh, in the last hurricane season or two hurricane seasons when the hurricanes came through. Um, you know, th there is, you know, the actual value, stated value, depreciated value. Um, I can tell you one thing, materials and inflation, the cost of construction has gone up dramatically over the last three years. Uh, so you got to make sure that your policy is going to be able to withstand it and you're going to have enough money to put the building back. Um, one of the other items that came up on the board I was on was that the, the roofs were all covered with proper coverage, but the windows and the soffits were not and all the soffits blew out on these buildings. Um, a lot of window leaks and issues there and they weren't covered. They used all the insurance policy up on the roof and didn't have adequate coverage on the other um, envelopes of the building. So making sure you have your head wrapped around that and that you have a proper policy. There's a, their insurers are getting very creative in order to drive the price down and, and give you a good price. But at the end of the day, what you're paying for sometimes isn't worth the the paper is written on and you're going to have issues down the road if you do have a, a catastrophic event. Next one. We alluded to it earlier. Um, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Hunt. Um, damage to roofing materials um, can be catastrophic. Um, it was said earlier, I've, I've been doing major hurricanes. Um, drying work for over 25 years now, 30 years. And I can tell you most of the times I don't see the roof fail, um, straight up failure of a roof. Usually it's um, something ancillary, a HVAC box, um, debris left on the roof that clogs the drain and cause an issue or 
uh, the, you know, like I said, the, the service panel and HVAC rolling across the roof and causing uh, cuts and tears into the roof. And then once that happens, it allows the wind to get into the roof um, and blowing the roof off. So making sure that you have all that covered um, and so that fastened down is my opinion. And also making sure that you have good documentation of the roof before and after. Um, if you're doing proper preventative maintenance throughout the years, Every year, you're able to document that you've been maintaining the roof and, and that this roof was in good, good condition before the hurricane hit as well. So making sure that you have all those items covered um, in your database. A good one that I saw uh, is make sure it's all not on paper in a file, um, in a filing cabinet in the property management office on ground zero on the first floor, because I heard a couple stories on, on a conference that they lost all the materials of the insurance policies, the roofing warranties went out the door when the, the high waters came and they didn't have it. So have it all backed up in a digital cloud so you can get to the information um, and, and understand it. Next slide. Key takeaways, just uh, watch the warnings, um, understand that the hurricanes move nonstop. I have a joke that if you're within the five days and you're in the X where the hurricane's gonna hit, it's not gonna hit you because historically speaking, it always moves, shifts. The weather's really hard to predict on the, st on the steering currents and the high winds, um, upper atmospheric winds. Um, have a you know emergency contact, um, phone numbers, and having all that organized, uh, inspect the roofs, and review the insurance policies, make sure everybody's up to speed um, and your agents are on board. I know the insurance market is a pain point for a lot of customers out there. I'm sure some people are dealing with it. Insurance companies are not renewing um, unless you re-roof and I'll just give you a little two seconds on that. Um, you know, they're requiring new attachments down to the deck so you can't do recovers or restorations. Some of you guys have very good roofs that are only 15, 20, year, 20 years old and performing very well. If the roofs were installed before 2007, the insurance companies are pushing back. And the theory behind that is after 2007, the code changed and the attachment um, attachment requirements are, are substantially greater and they can handle a higher wind load. So everybody's trying to get all the roofs past the 2007 engineering design standpoint. Um, and that's, a, that's what the insurance companies are uh, striving for. And like we said earlier, document photos, videos, I can't tell you how important that is. Um, a service we do offer, uh, we do a lot of preventative maintenance, um, hopefully a lot of you on the call. Uh, we do uh, advanced access of ramp inspections, roof asset management inspections, go up and inspect the roof um, to, to delineate emergency repairs that are needed, delineate stuff that's preventative, um, you know, that may need to be happening in the next 12 months, 24 months to keep the roof uh, under service, to keep the moisture out of the roofing system so you don't have a catastrophic failure. Um, and we're happy to provide those services. You can reach out to your account representative and we'll get you a, a get an inspection uh, scheduled with you. <clears throat> um, you can uh, scan this QR code. Um, it'll bring you to all our, our roofing webinars. Uh, those of you are on the on the call today um, we'll be getting a uh, cam credits if you uh, need it um, you uh, you can email the cam um, number if you did it on the registration we have it if you need need to uh, resubmit your cam number you can submit it to um, uh, the email that went out for this meeting request and we'll get you your cam credits in the next 30 days as uh, we process that and um, look forward to seeing you all in the future. Like I said, these are all our presentations down here. You can scan the QR code or go to our website if you'd like to learn more about different uh, subject matters. School's out, summer's here. Everybody enjoy the summer with the kids, if you have kids, and uh, stay cool out there. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Any uh, questions out there that we can answer, put in the chat. That said. OK. All right. Sure oh, yeah, I forgot to scan the QR code for the tile and we'll uh, get a drawing going. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great day.